Greetings and welcome to another episode of Business to Define, your weekly most comprehensive look at the world of business, finance and economics. A fortnight ago we had a conversation on the banking sector outlook for 2023. Tonight, I want again to speak about matters banking specifically with regard to KCB Group. Now the first time I interviewed Mr. Paul Russo, the feedback was massive and we decided Let's bring this guy again. So, Paul, Karibu Sana. Sante Sana. Thank you, Julian. Glad to have you on set. Thank you. So, Paul, let's start from here. The last time we spoke with you, you mentioned that um, you assumed this office and decided things had to be different. And I remember specifically we spoke about the asset quality conversation because in the numbers you filed, the NPL book was quite huge. Nine months since you became CEO, how different is KCB today from the one you assumed office in. Thank you for the bonus of uh, one more month, Julian. So uh, just coming to eight months, but uh, um, I think if you look at our numbers and uh, you know on the sidelines, you and I have discussed in the past around it. Um, when you take when you took over the role, uh, you've got to think about what is the future rather than the past. Um, and probably one of the things that I shocked. Uh, well, like yourself, is in June, I wrote down quite a big value um, and pushed uh, KCB, NPL, KCB Kenya particularly to around 23%. Correct. Um, and that was about taking advantage of a new chapter, uh, making the right calls and bold calls. Uh, but in, it was the first step in doing exactly what I promised, in the transformation of the, of the organization <coughs> going forward. So we've now moved that to around 20%. I think it's getting, getting down to 18%. So we've got a plan about recoveries, about supporting entities, um, uh, you know, as well as just making the tough calls of, of the sales. While I'm not a fan of the sales, if I can avoid, um, so, so we're tackling that. But it also gives you the opportunity to deploy your capabilities in the right places. Let me explain again further on. The relationship teams were, are built to grow business and to exactly do that, manage those relationships. They are not necessarily competent in the conversations of recoveries, restructures, and nursing those other entities too. But there's something also we must accept in banking is that they're equally conflicted because they're, 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 they're involved in, in relationships. I know it's controversial. It doesn't mean there's something wrong that you've done. But it just means that you are too, too, too deep into it to make hard calls to, to turn it around. So I separated those teams. So I, we built a special assets team that reports directly into me and we've unleashed the corporate team to now do what needs to be done to grow that book. Uh, obviously, um, we also had uh, you know, to rethink about our leadership. I am passionate about customer obsession. Uh, I am passionate about separating the role of the group and subsidiaries. So what you'll note of late is I split the group regional, uh, the group CEO and MD Kenya role. Because you've got to hold KCB Kenya, which is a critical entity, to account like any other business around South Sudan and drive that performance. So that's why we appointed Anastasia as the acting MD. So I have a new group structure that has changed a number of roles and we're filling, filling a few roles. A number of our colleagues uh, have, been, have been confirmed into the roles. But you also know we had the, the tougher job of concluding the DRC transaction. Yes. Um, now, because I'm preaching to the converted, it was raised to close before 31st uh, December. So then you need to, 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 have, to, have, to have that entity into your consolidation but as well as gives you the full year, the following year, for you to shape out the strategy and the performance of that organization. So, so, so my appointment became then a race to make sure as well that that, that was closed, which, which I'm glad we just crossed the finishing line on 15th of December. Yeah. All right. You've mentioned um, the special assets book, and I'd be curious to know, just how significant, how sizable is it? Because I'd imagine these are the clients who you are chasing for recoveries and uh, significantly driving your NPL book. 
So across the, the, the group, um, and, and these numbers are there, so, uh, you know, you can think about a, a 120 billion for the group. Isn't, isn't uh, That's not pocket change. There's no pocket change. Um, the good news is because, because of ticket sizes, in terms of number of customers, it's relatively small. Um, you know, you talk about 10 of those names being part of the NBK legacy legacy names um, and and you've seen a few actions on receiverships uh, the KCB was not really known of uh, but also there were three or so uh, government uh, agencies that you know entities that I took a decision to downgrade but they actually plans on how that was going to be resolved so it's more of an accounting and recognition point but you are, you're right the stock is significant and that is why it requires investment in a specialized team to be able to handle that and uh, because it's group wide i am housing it in the ceo's office to give it that focus and that independence and also release mostly the subsidiaries to focus on their own growth while you are creating a niche team to handle some of those those items still when you in our first conversation one of the concerns I raised with you is that when I looked at the numbers, your subsidiary NBK was uh, still breaching capital adequacy requirements. As we speak, is NBK recapitalized? I can tell you we're in the tail end of the approvals for recapitalization of NBK. Um, that should be called closed by the, 15, the March 15 board meeting. Um, and, and I think you... You've got, you've got a window to try and, you know, run certain actions, uh, as you know, before you then decide whether you recapitalize based on its performance. But also, I think, uh, Julian, let me answer the bigger question, is the number of actions we have not executed around NBK. And you know, in our last conversation, I've talked about KCB needing to build a true shared services model. Uh, because today, um, we can be a lot more cost efficient, particularly when it comes to not only re human capital resources, but as well as tech and related uh, cost licenses and duplication of that. So by the end of this year, uh, NBK will be on the same co-banking platform with KCB. And therefore, subject to regulator approval, and that has been teased out you'll run the back end as one. Um, that, that, that would be a huge relief for, 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 for NBK because you can see their cost. But it would also be a huge relief for the group across, across, across the setup. Um, when we look at data centers, they run their own data centers. <laughs> KCB Kenya runs its own data centers in the same, in the same location. But I've also spoken uh, to staff, and therefore I can speak freely. But in the end, um, you, you, you'll then be able to serve the customers in any branch. And, and, and that then closes the issue of branch overlaps and, and facilities, right? Um, <clears throat> effectively, uh, gives you the opportunity to deploy in what I believe in and I've run NBK for, 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 two, for two years to deploy their capability for public sector and related entities and value chain. Um, you know, I've always said, you know, they have some premium branches in locations that we did, KCB didn't get. Those must be retained and the ecosystem must be retained. Um, you know, for example, just being inside the Times Tower and being able to, to manage yeah. that. Um, but then it will be of a different shape. And I've had this convo with all our our, our, our staff, but it'll be, it, it will be lean to be able to now grow. So you, you kind of monolithic at the moment, you're carrying all the lo loads on the back end. Um, so, so we've got approval to actually co-locate the data center for the two from the central bank. So we lift and bring them to, together. Yeah, so, so other than capitalization is reshaping it. But um, you'll also notice we now have a new MD. Uh, and I can say on public TV, I'm a fan of George because uh, George has built his career across, you know, banking. 
but you, the organization requires a clear thinker, uh, and I joke with him with, with his double mathematics degree and, 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 and master's. He's very clear in what he does and how he drives that. And that was one of the things that informed our decision to do that. Um, the Adrand is raised in KCB, running uh, KCB Rwanda, as well as coming into, into uh, you know, the, bring the two entities together. But then we got to the opportunity where I think it's a, from a leadership perspective, uh, Julian, uh, BPR is probably 140 branches in Rwanda today. And I sit in the board. And uh, we got to a point where we believed that a local was more suitable for, despite George's super performance. Um, and therefore, within the context of the changes we, I was making in the structure, uh, we understood that uh, there were many opportunities for George. He chose to go for the NBK one. Um, guess what? I can only manage his balance coconut. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> On that point uh, of the new MD for National Bank, in the past, and even now I think, there's a pervasive view that um, NBK is too overweight in the government franchise business. Uh, maybe this is a question for him, but being the group MD you would know, is there a plan to recalibrate that? I think, I think first, um, you know, we are taught, and if I remember well, for you know, marketing, I think it was principles of marketing and I can't remember the, the, the author where he says, stick to your knitting. So be very careful that you don't. Uh, so I think NBK will continue to be, that will be the core. But I see personally opportunities and across the group to digitize the SME uh, process and supporting, supporting that. But we haven't, we also haven't been even you know, successful as such to run an end-to-end -end, uh, customer value propositions for the big government entities that we have. We've got a lot of opportunities. Um, and I don't expect that we will try and do the same thing between NBK and uh, KCB Kenya. Certainly no, not, not, not when I'm the group CEO. They are defining their niche. It's been the conversation with their board since uh, November last year. They have to find that space for themselves. Um, because what will I tell an investor and how do I tell a shareholder that we are fighting for the same teachers to bank the same teachers? It starts, does it? Julian, you know, you don't need to complicate these things. It just doesn't make sense. If it's a number of people, add more people on this other side and move on with life. Um, so, so, so I think, I personally think there is a space for NBK and I've, and, you know, I've reinforced that. But we need to quickly demonstrate that. And, 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 and I understand as a group CEO, you, 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 you need to demonstrate quickly that that does exist. And um, the recapitalization is a, is, is a shared understanding by the group board that that exists. Uh, and if management team of NBK are watching as well as the group executives, uh, it's, it's a time to demonstrate that. And, and it's not... It's not um, it's not new to the team. Okay. And uh, I know you might be closed about this, but uh, what sort of ticket are we looking at in this recapitalization? What size? Um, let me just say they will be compliant. <laughs> they will be compliant. <laughs> Good answer there. So, Paul, KCB is one of the two banks involved in the Hustler Fund management. And uh, my question to you is, What's the need for KCB? First is there was an issue on the table. Uh, given who we were um, and what we've done in the past on digital lending as well as uh, you know, building digital capability and collaboration with telcos, we were on the table. Um, I think if there is a national issue to be delivered, um, I doubt you would expect KCB not to be on the table. We have the competencies on technology. Uh, you know that we run uh, one of the latest Huawei uh, models in, 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 in part of supporting our digital lending. 
um, you know, we, we built the Sopra system that runs, uh, you know, uh, KCB and PESA, uh, as well as uh, all the new propositions that we've put in place. Um, and therefore, we had capacity and we had capability and we had relationship with the telcos and uh, we had the government's goodwill to deliver it. And, and we needed as critical stakeholders to be on the table to, de to deliver that. But then there's, uh, you can think hard about a commercial view. Um, hopefully I build leverage for myself on that front. Uh, two, there are a number of lessons that we can learn uh, from the Aslafa. And, and uh, uh, you know, in the end, when we see the true performance and ability of who you take risk on, um, it's very important. But I think I left a very big component. <coughs> Remember, you need a, it's a lending product, it's a credit product. You need a bank. You know, so we had to work with the central bank and with their support to first get approval to roll out that stuff. But at the heart of it is we had to do modeling and as well as you know, risk assessment and assign limits. That was done by our teams. Uh, the lessons and the accuracy is something that I would not uh, thread off for anything. Um, you know, even as we remodel increased limits that, uh, that have gone live, uh, because the 6.6 .6 people that have been repaying, um, you know, got uh, revised limits. You know, modeling that and determining within a limited budget as well has been done by the team, you know, credit risk lending uh, setup. Um, and, and therefore you've, Third one and most important is to realize that institutions are not just there for themselves. You can make money. Um, but this is a proposition, you know, whether, and, and, and I hope, the, and, and I've read different divides and different positions around it. But look at how much amount of money that has been out there. And credit to Hustler Fund. Uh, the, the limits, banks will never have given some probably 8.5 8 uh, people in that list a single shilling. But that was the position, right? And I hope people can see it from a point of view of repairing their credit standing. Because I see it as a perfect opportunity for individuals to repair. Maybe banks, we have no time to wait for you to recover, to repair. This is a window, in my view, for individuals to take advantage and cre repair their credit, uh, um, you know, standing. Um, because that whole population, Julians, will not have gotten a shilling from, <laughs> from banks. And I see it here, and you can ask me why. It's a number of them were listed in the past. The risk appetite is different. But here was somebody was willing to give something to those people. You come to the table. Yeah. Yeah. So, Paul, um, the president has indicated that out of the 14 or so million Kenyans who have borrowed, about 800,000 are struggling, servicing their obligations. And uh, I have asked government officials a question, what is the asset quality state of the Hustler Fund disbursements. Given the heavy lifting KCB has done around risk modeling about credit scoring, I'm confident you have visibility of that. Um, I think uh, let, we, we have to be very clear, Julian, who, who owns Hustler Fund, and you, you, you have to interview those parties to, <laughs> to give you the answer. But overall, from a banking perspective, it's early days because the yeah, number, remember, there is a tenor and, and, and and the 800,000 were those that had crossed that tenor period and hadn't paid. <clears throat> and uh, there are also actions, for example, in the review of limits, right, uh, for the 6.6. .6. There is a pool effect, right, because there is demonstration that the promise of reviewing limits for those who perform actually does work. And over time, you actually improve your credit uh, uh, credit uh, rating. The, the, the view and the work to have a financial rating for Hustler Fund uh, members uh, and then linking reviews and limits 
on to that financial rating and, and frequency, I can assure you will have a, a significant pull effect. But also there is a push effect because we, we are also playing a role in helping to try and, 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 and collect. But I think at the end of the day, if you ask me as a person um, uh, and, and maybe as a CEO of KCB, if you build that core to get to around 10 million, remember these are people who did not have the space to participate in. If you build that code to around 10 million and you truly then, and I have no doubt, I have no reason to doubt that that will happen, the financial rating and continuous review, risk space linking of, of growth, and therefore they will end up over time with higher limits and do something meaningful, you will transform. Right. And, and, and I think that's where I'm staying in mind. If you ask me as a banker, I'm asking myself, when will that 10 million cross to my side? Yeah. If, if you get what I mean, because you, you are pumping in. But we need to be able to bring in others, right, who then convert. So, so somebody gets to around your 250. Um, I'm, not, I'm not talking about cannibalizing us. But you, you, you will see that uh, you're transforming 10 million. That, that I think, is, is powerful. I think we'll... Just like I've talked to you about 120 billion of my NPL, yeah. Julian. I'm the last person who can speak about financing on the basis of NPL. You've got to look at it on the basis of what change are you making while controlling and managing risk. So, so I don't want to be the fellow that is pushing here recoveries of 120 billion. And then you're chasing the, the you know, you're pointing to the other party that is not in your ecosystem or something like that. I actually think the 800, uh, um, because those numbers we are aware of, the 800 is actually a good number at that stage. Um, so hopefully the, the signaling or by increase of rates and financial rating will, 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 will then change, uh, will have a pull effect. And, and, and as simple even as the words that I'm putting in here, people have an opportunity to repair their credit records. And I think it's a perfect opportunity. So as we speak, um, by the latest data, some 14 million Kenyans have borrowed through the Hustler Fund, and KCB has done the heavy lifting as far as uh, risk profiling credit scoring is concerned. I'm looking at it and wondering, um, you potentially have a war chest of data here. And at what point does it cease being a, a matter that could potentially be conflict for you? That look, I have visibility of all this data and I'm seeing these guys. Here I run KCB, here's Hustler Fund. Why can't I tailor make products to meet their needs? I think first is data privacy, and we comply to that law. And you've seen how punitive it is. So, um, you know, KCB has, has, has uh, you know, approvals, and will comply uh, to, to data privacy. Um, you know, you can say most of those guys are KCB and PESA and fully the customers, <laughs> so, so it wouldn't be would be completely entirely new. Um, but I think from if I got it correctly, the president's view was to graduate those people and eventually make them bankable, in the meaning of bankable today. Um, I pray that when that happens, yeah, that they will come to KCB. <laughs> um, and, and that's why I was talking about the 10 million. If, if, if you can turn 10 million people to be bankable in the definition of bankable, um, because that number will continue because you're you are recruiting over time. Uh, but I'm just talking about if you create a core. Uh, uh, you ask how many banks have built customers of that number, uh, you know, in, in the time. So it is actually something we agree for those of us who are partners in it. Because these are the same, like I said, and I won't speak for my friend Peter, but look, they, they could be the same customers in Fuliza. But we all came together and understood exactly the end game. Right? You could be lending here and there today, but 
the whole aspect is improving the credit standing, the credit rating, the financial rating of these individuals and make them bankable in future. That, even if I'm doing it from a KCB CSR, we'll do it. I see. Talking about Fuliza, Paul, in September last year, we had the slash of the tariffs. And I'm curious to know, one, what have you observed ever since in terms of the churn of the Fuliza? And secondly, how do you intend to offset that dent in your margins? I think the, 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 it, it goes to, it, it, it's, in your, it's in your first um, question. It's in, the, it's in the volumes. Yeah, it's in the volumes. And we saw the volumes grow. Um, how but, much have they grown? But yeah, I think the last I checked was around 15. But I, 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 it's not the latest. It's at some point. Um, which we'll definitely have in the in the in March for for you. So I'm I'm also being cautious as a listed entity. So you kind of remind yourself you need to be careful. But I think the 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 general consensus, both from you know for those of us that were participating, was uh, Fuliza was expensive. That we didn't need to be told, and there was a conversation and. Uh, we, we are also Kenyans, and therefore anybody who was watching uh, forums as uh, we were building up to election, the message was loud and clear. Uh, and we can't pretend, yes, I'm a corporate uh, CEO, but you can't pretend that you're not seeing what is happening out there and the messaging that is coming out there. So it was a perfect opportunity to take feedback and do that as partners. And Peter has always been on record as well saying, you know, he believed that it was expensive. I think Michael Joseph is also on record at some point on that. I hope I'm correct in, in that. Bit. So, but, but like the human capital expert I am, you need certain changes to happen, to you know, certain triggers to happen, if, if you get what I mean. So that was uh, just a perfect uh, trigger. It, that's how change occurs, and that's how, that's how you deal with it. Um, yeah, I'm sure if I go back to the market today, people still believe it's expensive, yeah. right? Um, it's, 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 it's about, so I think in the end, uh, it's about what exactly are we are trying to address. So it's supposed to cushion you, <laughs> right? But we must find ways of getting you out of that core issue. It's like the client uh, discussion I was having with you. Must look for a, a real permanent solution because it it's 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 over time, and I think the conversations that are happening across the country is 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 uh, on the economy, and you need to improve it. For 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 for, I think if you look at, I'm sure we have a number of university students who are in Fuliza, right? Um, yeah. I would just imagine um, they're not there for because they just want Fuliza. Uh, so we must also be on the table to address the other micros, and, and that's our role. Okay. Well, we need to close this conversation. So the TMB acquisition closed now fully integrated into the business. Uh, I know it's still early days, but um, what sort of vibe are you getting from that side in terms of the business pulse, as well as uh, things as simple, and we discussed this earlier, as uh, risk pricing in that market? Yeah, it's early days. Uh, let's just say I've been there four times since the acquisition, and that tells you the risk profile. Uh, so you are you are you are perfect on the risk. But the built competencies. You asked me a question, you know, at some point why I thought uh, you know, TMB there's something to to learn a lot to learn about. And one of them is actually that running an entity in an environment like that. Remember what happened in South Sudan. Most entities hibernated, they closed down. And, um, these guys run 130 branches across almost every location, major location in, in, in that country. Remember, it's a cash economy. Yeah. yeah? And Julian's, let me be as basic as I can be. Those guys have their own jet to move cash from one place to another. So TMB actually moves its own car. They have perfected logistics of how to, um, to move, to, to manage that risk around cash. Um, their biggest client is actually the police and the army. 
across. They pay their salaries for TMB. Uh, how can you say that person does not have better competencies? They can teach us a bit of lessons on logistics, right? <laughs> um, you know, the last trip I was in, why not jet with the CFO as well as um, the group HR director just to share the details and uh, my, they were also moving money from Kinshasa to, to Goma <laughs> and we were there together with the mula and uh, everything because they plan the logistics and know you know this is how we're going to, to, to move it and um, remember the bigger risk is not that it's now from where you've dropped it to get it to the other point and make sure that it's delivered um, and they make money. Yeah. They have high liquidity, so that. Uh, we've got opportunity to syndicate facilities, uh, and we've got, got, got a number that have, one that has been closed already, a significant one, and a number um, that, 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 are, that, are, that are in pipeline, uh, Julian. So I think we can take our governance structures, our you know, processes and ways of working, adopt and align with what they do in their framework to create a more robust uh, setup. But it takes a while, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a change expert. It takes a while. Yeah. And, and, and how you do that determines the long-term success of that business. Uh, so we will work, as you, as, uh, and there's a long way to answer your question, to reset up, um, you know, reorganize the board, bring in governance. Um, you know, we'll have three group board members sitting in that in that board. Um, so two two independent and and the CEO, because we need that transition. Create the right committees for for it, um, and we want to triple their performance. In what horizon? No, here or near. Here on here, that I can. Tell. We remember we closed the deal on uh, 15, right? Yes. This I can speak about, uh, uh, and we, we we had just finished our planning period, so they are into our performance management system already. Yes. So they are the MD has a balance scorecard from myself, which we've, we've we've discussed like everybody else. So they have a balance scorecard like NBK. Um, so. They didn't have a performance management system. They can learn from KCB about performance management system. So, um, yeah, le let me say I'm, I'm bullish about DRC, uh, but but you become bullish with caution, yeah. right? Because yeah. of. And speaking about being bullish, and really my final question, uh, in our earlier conversation, you remember I raised the issue of when I look at their income structure, heavily NFI driven, do you intend to change that? How do you intend to balance that out? I think it will be balanced. Yeah. And, and you've seen those who went before us, right? Uh, that liquidity has been deployed in other businesses, in other places where they can make a little bit more. <laughs> um, but I'm a firm believer, Julian, that uh, you must impact in the markets that you operate in. Um, so, so we will we will we will make lending. We will take lending risk with the right entities and right organisations, but largely because of the ability to syndicate with KCB Kenya. So you can imagine the approver has to be Kenya because the risk appetite has to be on this other end. So I'm comfortable with that because it's an established business making a decision whether to syndicate or not. But it's about how we also deploy the liquidity. Right? Uh, there are opportunities. And that's the beauty of being about a, big, a group like we are. Yeah? yeah? Without going into detail, right? You put that some of that money into Tanzania. See what it can do for you, yeah. right? Because there's, um, you know, there's a framework with central bank, Tanzania banks, and so forth. Put it into CBK, into into Bank of Tanzania, right? Yeah. If you wanted a level of detail, you take this and this, make your money. Yeah. It, it's it's now how you optimize treasury across the group. 
um, so that you're deploying it correctly. But I think it's about how, in the end, any acquisition, and I said this to my team, is how you commercialize and deliver shareholder return for that. That is what keeps me awake. And I know that's where you're heading to. But I think in the end is when I stand in front, they say, and that's a question I get about NBK, is, but you're doing well in KCBK then. You don't need to, right? Yeah. So if I don't deliver and demonstrate that value, that question won't go away, yeah. Yeah. right? Now think about, we've always said Ethiopia is a missing link for us. But you know, you, you gotta demonstrate the commercialization in DRC to buy might get approval by goodwill for the other side, isn't it? So they're interlinked. And, and, uh, and, and I also say to executives, it also um, determines how you are judged as executives of that organization in terms of level of decision making. You don't need to know that you are being judged in that, but that's exactly how people are doing. Okay, so you bought DRC, let's see what you report at the end of the year 2023 because you've had it for a year. So people will be ready. You say, Paul, you're bullish. Yes, okay, that's fine. December will come. We'll meet in March, isn't it? Is that, that, that's, that's what they do. So what you do between now and then is what matters. Following the consolidation of uh, KCB Rwanda and BPR, are you finally seeing that you are unlocking the synergies in these two entities, consolidated? It's a very tricky question, given, again, we're listed, right? You, and, and Julius, you can check this. Um, 2022 can demonstrate that we made the right decision to acquire a BPR. Um, we made sure that uh, the, the integration process was well thought out. So we've just gone live with a, a standard core banking system. So, so we, we're actually fi fixing snags as we speak. Um, that will bring to life the synergies that from the two entities. Uh, because while we had, we had brought the two organizations together um, and we were serving customers seamlessly, the core banking systems were too, there was an interface to, to just deliver that. And that was because we needed to time when we go live on the integration system. So uh, Julian's again going into details. There are periods you come in that people are paying taxes in some of the countries and it's a, you can't interrupt that. Uh, there is a period of salaries you have, can't interrupt that. So we had to look for a point where we could go live. Paul Russo, let me hold you there. Thank you so much for your time. You. you know, you and I can talk until the chickens come home to roost. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That's been another episode of Business Redefined. Speaking to Mr. Paul Russo, we shall keep you updated, especially when they release the full year number. So stay tuned. Thank you.